We've had a pretty darn rainy last couple of weeks, but you know, especially this week, I think it rained pretty much every day. Um, and not that that's really a valid excuse for this, but due to the rain and other things, I ended up not being able to have time to work on the Audi as much as I wanted to, to get the stuff sorted out. So I have to delay that video. So since I don't really have that Audi content for you or any vehicle content right now, the lot is spare, sparse. Um, I figure I'll just tell you a little story about my worst venture in the car business so far. The only car that I've ever lost money on. I've, I've about broke even on some cars before, but I've never lost... Oop, Beetle's taking a poop. So I'll tell you about it. Um, I learned from my mistakes. Hopefully, if you guys are into this, you'll learn from my mistakes and, you know, not, not do what I did because I overlooked several things that ended up leading me to lose the money. So, guess we'll... Get started. Beetle is fighting the poop. She ate a bunch of candy last night. Got, hey, don't eat. She ate a bunch of candy last night because she got into it. She's crazy. And so I'm pretty sure she's going to have a hard time pooping. Well, she's got to learn her lesson, just like I learned my lesson with vehicles. Or at least this particular vehicle. All right, Beetle has healed. And I'm ready to tell the story. So the vehicle was a 2010 GMC... Yeah, GMC Terrain that I purchased. Beetle and into food again. That I purchased for thirty-two hundred dollars. Had a listed for thirty-six hundred. Um, book value was six thousand because it was all-wheel drive V6. Everybody wants it, so I figured I could make a little profit on it. Now this car was rough. In the pictures, you could see it was rough, um, but when I got there, it was even rougher than I thought it was going to be. It had like no rocker panels. The fenders were rusty. It had the engine light on. And it had a cracked windshield. I, but I still figured maybe I could put, you know, $700, $1,000 into it and still be all right. And it would be all fixed up and everything. But I was wrong. So I have um, some videos of me doing work on it that I will play throughout this. So you could see how rough it, how rough the condition was and some of the work, body work and w other work I did to it was. But anyway, the ad was, I think, said, you know, $3,600. GMC Terrain needs body work to pass the Vermont inspection. I think that was all it had on it. That's, I mean, that's the only thing that he said was wrong with it. So the first mistake I made was the engine light was on, but I didn't bring my scanner and I figured it was just going to be something easy, like a evap leak or something. Um, but when I brought it home and I scanned it, it was the crank position sensor. I mean, it's only like a $60 sensor, but the way GM puts it like underneath the timing cover or behind the timing cover on these cars, this is a 3.0 V6 and the 3.0 V6 and the 3.6 V6 from GM are not, uh, not super well designed. They have timing issues and they have bad locations. For example, the water pump is a thousand dollar job. And this particular crank position sensor was a, like a 10, 11 hour job. So immediate off the bat, you know, if you value my labor at like whatever, $60 an hour. And then an eight-hour job, whew, I'm losing a lot of time that I could be working on something else. Lesson one, you know, bring a bring a scanner, scan your cars if it has engine light on, because it can, an engine light can either be a $25 gas cap or it could be like a $2,000 catalytic converter or something. Anyway, then I, I drove, as I was driving the car home, I could tell that it needed front-end rebuild, or at least ball joint sway bar links, maybe even the sway bar, as I was just driving it, because... It was clunking around, and on the test drive, it wasn't clunking around because this uh, road was smooth, whereas my road is a dirt road, so you can definitely feel it. So there you go. That's another 300 bucks. And on the drive home, I could hear the the wheel bearing was screaming on the interstate. It was so loud. So I did the wheel bearing, and I actually have footage of me doing the wheel bearing, so I will, I'll play that now. And in this footage, you can also see the car. You can see how kind of how rough it is and everything like that. But I think it was the rear... Uh, passenger side wheel bearing that I did. So let me play that. But anyway, the wheel bearing was also not um, not something he had mentioned in the ad. It did have four all-new brakes, which must have cost him a lot of money because they were pretty nice brakes. And it had all-new snow tires, too, which were all pretty nice. So all things that I was like, oh, that's good. I'll buy this car for sure. Um, next big thing that I overlooked was the windshield was cracked. And I just slipped my mind. I didn't even really, like, notice that it was cracked. Um, 
But anyway, for inspection, you need to have a good windshield, and that windshield cost $414. It was a lot of money, <laughs> so and another $414 down the drain. And, and I forgot to mention, um, after I even after I tried to fix the engine light, it still was on. I couldn't get it off for the life of me, and you need to have the engine light off for Vermont inspection. I could not, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't want to take it to a dealer to pay that cost and everything. So the next big thing um, was the rust. There was a lot of body rust on this car. Um, it was on the rockers, it was on the tail gate, tail, what do they call them on these things, the hatch, um, the front fenders. It had rust everywhere. The frame was good, but rust on the body. So I did my best in taking care of the rust, and I have footage of that too, so I will play that footage. You can see me attempting to make the body look nicer, so... Here it is. So I brought the GMC just to do a little bit of uh, body work on it. So we're just gonna sand down this side. Basically the front two fenders are the only ones that really have the body rust on it. Uh, the back one's got a little bit there, but it's not really a big deal. Oh yeah, and I forgot about, forgot the tailgate also had it. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna sand them down real quick. So here's how the GMC's front fender's looking after the first Bondo sand down. The other side's a little better than this side, I do believe, but. Second coat of Bondo sanded down, and whoo, she's looking flush and beautiful. Just plopped a little bit of primer on either side. Well, bam, bam. And now I got a coat of the old white stuff on there. She's looking sweet. Oh, and of course this corner had rust in it. That's taken care of now, too. So you can see, I uh, the rust was pretty much, I mean, the, the car looked good, and I have pictures I'll show you the pictures that I took of it. So here are those pictures. Um, but even though it looked good, you know, I still knew that it was, it had rust previously and the rust would, in probably a couple of years, it would start showing through back, back through again because of how rusty it was in the first place. So then you have the moral conflict of, you have to write in your ad, you know, um, rust has been repaired before. So there was no way that I was gonna be able to sell this car even if I fixed the engine light and everything else, I couldn't sell it at book value because it had it had, had rust in the past and it was still gonna be rustier underneath than what book value wants. Oh, and I did the I did the muffler too. I don't have footage of that, but I, I did the muffler too. That was like $114. I tried to get it inspected and I it failed. So sixty dollars down the drain. Um I got it registered. That was my that was a huge mistake. So this was I did this way back when I had the 04 Duramax, so like almost a, almost a year ago now I did this. Uh, actually, no, what, seven months ago. I did this seven months ago. And I was register at that time I was registering all my cars, which is so much money because Vermont taxes you 6% of the book value, not of what you paid. So this book value is $6,000, taxed me 6% of that, which is like, $330 and then they add on their own fee of $76 so I was I think it was $420 to register this thing that $420 that I spent was just me throwing money in the trash so all in on this car was $3,200 on the car and then I actually um, got a lot of good deals and I got some scrapyard parts and the guy I bought the car from actually included some of the parts because he was trying to keep a good rec reputation for me. So I was less than a, less than a thousand dollars on top of the original price of the car. So I think total, I was like $4,100 into this car. Um, and it wasn't inspected. It wasn't inspectable because I had an engine light on and it still had some rust on the rockers that wasn't inspectable. So I just listed it for break even price. I listed it for $3,200 and if I'd have sold it for break even, I would have lost about eight hundred, maybe eight fifty, maybe even nine hundred. But I ended up selling it for twenty nine hundred dollars to another car flipper who was gonna fix all the stuff. That month, that particular month of business was probably my best month. So <laughs> luckily I had enough other sales to make up for that. But if if I had made that many bad decisions on all my other cars, I'd be in a little bit of trouble right now. But Luckily, it was only that one car that I made all these terrible mistakes. And then to make matters even worse, um, my, the last mistake that I did was I had registered this car and I the car flipper who I sold it to was like, oh, can you just leave your plates on it for me? I'll mail them right back to you. 
just like that. As soon as I get home, and I said, okay, just, you know, mail them back to me as soon as you get home, because you can't, I mean, I'll get in trouble if anything happens to this car with my plates. And so he was like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. So he obviously didn't mail them back to me, and he went through about $200 worth of tolls uh, before the DMV canceled my plates. Cause I called him. I was like, Hey, I need, I need these plates canceled. Um, and they eventually canceled it, but not until I had to pay $200 worth of his tolls. Cause he, he, I mean, he, he must've taken my plate and put them on all of his, or maybe not all of his cars, but you know, one of his cars that he did all, daily driving with. So basically my mistakes were one, I didn't scan the engine light code two. I overlooked the windshield. Uh, three, I didn't take it on long enough of a test drive. You got to take it up to interstate speeds and you got to take it over bumpy roads because that's where the two things will uh start to you know that's where everything will come out you'll see all the problems if you do that four i shouldn't have registered it five shouldn't have left my plates on you know six i shouldn't have even bought the windshield because i couldn't it wasn't inspectable anyway so there was no point of me buying the windshield so you know a lot of mistakes built up i think i lost around fourteen hundred dollars we'll look at the we'll look at the spreadsheet though learning experience ain't that right there beetle dog ain't that right yes it is so here's my spreadsheet i just put these two out of the way because i'm not showing you all my stuff and i'll just show you a good thing and then uh, you know the bad thing so this is the terrain you can see everything i forgot i actually got the muffler for only 30 bucks and then wheel bearing and cps he included because he felt bad bondo that's kind of shop supplies so it goes with miscellaneous all in i was 42.18 i sold it for 2900 and lost 1300 dollars. and i estimate that i had 1800 dollars into it and then i also lost 200 more dollars in toll fees but luckily that came gradually so it wasn't like a big hit all at once um that's that's pretty much it though uh for comparison this is what a good sale looks like yeah i mean that's what happened there's nothing else to it <laughs> Anyway, yeah, weird style of video. Um, hope you guys learned something from that. Hope you found it interesting. I definitely learned. I uh, just didn't have any car content to put up for you guys this week, so sorry. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. Oh, yeah, she's an automatic liftgate. No big deal. <laughs> nice. And it gives me a show on the screen, even. Cool.